Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's continue in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, we already covered verse 3 yesterday, but I want to give you context. So would you bear with me to the glory of God, here in the word of God, if we start in verse 3 again and then continue on, uh, I believe, to verse 6 today. For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. Since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds, we demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God. The practicing of apologetics and evangelism is not a neutral debate. It's an act of Christian victory in spiritual warfare. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. And we are ready to punish any disobedience once your obedience is complete. It's just strong words. You're gonna see this come again in, in chapter 13, verse two. Here's a, a sneak peek at, the, at the, the, the final chapter of this book. He's, Paul writes, I gave a warning when I was present the second time, and now I give a warning while I am absent to those who sinned before and to all the rest. If I come again, I will not be lenient. Paul's angry. He's, he's using strong language here because of the self-deputized super apostles, as he calls them in these late chapters of 2 Corinthians, who are preaching a false gospel, leading people away from the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul is not going to be lenient with them. He's expressed incredible grace towards people who have struggled with sin, but this is a different context entirely. These are not people who are struggling with sin. These are saboteurs in the midst of the Christian church. These are Corinthian false apostles who are preaching a false gospel. They know that they need to rip at Paul's credibility in order to have any of their own, and so they are attacking Paul's credibility. Paul's not overly sensitive. He doesn't have he, he, he doesn't have an overly sensitive ego. He's not fragile. He can take criticism for crying out loud. The man was beaten five times with the 40 lashes minus one. I mean, they, it, we're not talking about an overly sensitive guy here. He's defending the true gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, it's not that he can't take criticism. It's that these super apostles are leading people away from Jesus. And so he uses that harsh and direct language. And we are ready to punish any disobedience once your obedience, speaking collectively to the Corinthian church, is complete. But back up, because I just heard a verse that my mom taught me when I was a little dude. And it's a very useful verse. It's a very powerful verse. It's an extremely militant verse. We uh, we take every thought captive to obey Christ. This, this verse was shared with me a year and a half ago in an incredibly challenging time in my own personal life when I was dealing with some, dealing with some heat. And, and it dawned on me that verse that I'd had memorized since I was a little kid is really militant. Take every thought captive. <laughs> wow, you are the aggressor then, aren't you? Take every thought captive. These are our brains. Okay, these are our thoughts. So take those thoughts captive. <laughs> that's, that's militant. And it made sense when I zoomed out of the context. Oh yeah, that's right. He's literally talking about warfare. It's on the heels of a comment about warfare and the weapons that we have in Christ to demolish strongholds. So to the glory of God, Christian, kick some demonic tail, especially winning the war in your own head. Take those thoughts captive. This is your brain for crying out loud. So take those thoughts captive and make them obedient. Wow, you are then the aggressor and the war for your own mental health when you come under a demonic attack like this and make it obedient, not just to you, obedient to Christ. Take every thought captive. Make it obedient to Christ. So you're not <laughs> in, in the, the battlefield for your own mind. You're not some sort of despot dictator. You're not some sort of rogue general. You're making your thought life obey Christ. And the fact that you've taken thoughts captive and then made them obedient means that the thoughts are transformed from evil to righteousness itself. 
Your thoughts then have testimonies, but they first must be taken captive and made obedient to Christ. You win the war in your own mind by rendering it obedient to Jesus. So be the aggressor in your own thought life. You don't have to sit there and be subject to your own brain's whimsies. I know exactly what that's like. Your brain can just get away from you. This verse is militant, and it's in the context of militant spiritual warfare teaching. And it's in the context of Paul waging warfare for the heart of the Corinthian church against false teachers who were spreading a demonic false gospel. So to the glory of God, take your own thoughts captive, militantly, aggressively. You are not a passive recipient of thoughts. It's your brain. Through cognition, to the glory of God, make those thoughts obedient to Christ. Cross-reference this with Philippians 4, 8. You think instead on what is true, what is noble, what is excellent, what is praiseworthy. You think on what obeys Christ.